Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. A Christian school fires a Christian teacher because her son attended the school and she objected to transgender lessons? We interview Ryan Dobson, son of James Dobson, about his own rebel parenting ministry. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. A Christian school has fired a mother who also worked at the school because she petitioned against transgender lessons being given to her own son who was a student at the school where she taught. The Blaze reports that a Christian school in Britain fired a pastoral assistant who posted online her objections to transgender lessons being taught at the Church of England school where her son attended. The farmer's school in Fairford, Gloucester fired Christy Higgs after she argued on her Facebook page and told her followers to sign a petition against the government's relationships and sex education. And these laws, which are apparently going to into effect in September of 2020, mandating transgender lessons to her children. The UK's Department of Education new guidelines, dubbed No Outsiders, would require children as young as five to receive homosexual and transgender lessons about relationships and gender reassignments. On Tuesday, a disciplinary panel dismissed the 43-year-old mother who worked at a separate school from the primary school where her son attends after it found her guilty of gross misconduct and illegal discrimination for simply encouraging people to sign a petition to the government. This is released by the Christian Legal Center who is helping her. The mother of two voiced her objections to a pair of children's books which are already at the ch child's school which feature homosexual stories. One story is about a boy who wants to wear a dress and the other is about a red crayon that learns it is really a blue crayon. Hmm. The panel determined Tuesday that Higgs' comments, quote, could bring the school into disrepute and damage the reputation of the school, end quote. Well, I would think the school's reputation would be damaged by promoting homosexuality at an otherwise Christian school. Higgs worked at the secondary school for six years before she was fired. Her employee record was unblemished up until that time. And that's the news. Our thanks to The Blaze for that report. Uh, here's what the Bible says in Proverbs 22. Train up a child in the way you should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Let's take a short break, and we will have interviews from NRB. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Did you know religious freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also face punishment if they dare to object to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities, or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you 
four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30-day prayer manual, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined now by author and podcast host, former radio host of Family Talk with his dad, James Dobson. Of course, I'm talking about Ryan Dobson, who is leading Rebel Parenting with his wife. Uh, Ryan, what's your wife's name? Laura. Ryan and Laura, that sounds like a, a soap opera. A, a little bit, huh? Yeah, it, and it seems like that. Well, that's one of our podcasts. We do a show called Oh, The Stories We Will Tell, and it's 30 minutes every week from the day we met up until today, and it's totally unfiltered. So yeah, it's a bit of a soap opera sometimes, yeah. Well, I'm impressed that you're uh, out there serving Jesus in whatever capacity you can. Of course, you're the son of a famous dad. What impact has that had on your life? Oh, what impact hasn't it had on my life? Um, yeah, someone asked me that earlier. It, it was... I didn't know we were famous until the sixth grade. I didn't know that happened. Yeah. Um, and a substitute teacher came in and was taking role and said, Ryan Dobson, I said, here. And she goes, oh, like Dr. Dobson. And I go, yeah, that's my dad. She goes, oh, honey, I know you wish he was. <laughs> and I remember thinking, what? What are you talking about? What? Are, I didn't say anything back because it was just so shocking. And then the whole class erupts. No, that's his dad. That's his dad. I'm looking around like, why does everyone know who my dad is? What are you guys talking about? Well, the floodgates opened. I mean, it was, it was from then on, I guess, fair game. You know, all the carpool moms were listening to Focus on the Family on the way into school. So uh, it changed a little bit. Um, and it's opened a ton of doors, too. So I've got a love for the family. I mean, marriage, it's, it's under such an attack, but it's one of the greatest things in the whole world. Like, a good marriage is the best feeling ever, and a bad one is the most lonely place you can possibly be. And so we just try to help parents and help marriages get better and better. So you had that legacy, I suppose, modeled to you by your parents, and, and Shirley Dobson is, of course, a, a legend in the pro-family movement. Right. Um, but now you and Laura lead your own ministry about marriage. Yeah, definitely. It's a different generation, honestly. The millennials and the Gen Xers are dealing with so much that's going on. Uh, when my parents started Focus on the Family, pornography wasn't as big as it is today. It's in 80-90% of marriages now. It's all over the place, and marriages crumble because of it. And we're telling people, you don't have to get divorced. I mean, you can, and sometimes we say it's probably the best option for you, and you don't have to. You can work through those things. Uh, the big one we get right now is we call it Together Alone. So you're together on the couch. But your husband's watching Sports Center on the iPad and you're watching TV or you're on Instagram and he's watching TV and you're together, but you're alone. And you're just drifting apart slowly but surely and it gets lonelier and lonelier. We're trying to get parents and couples back together again in each other's faces, growing as, you know, as families. And some, sometimes you gotta unplug, you gotta turn off the TV, turn off the computers, turn off the cell phones and just look at each other. Definitely, definitely. I tell you what, we put a fire pit in our backyard. I had no idea how amazing a fire pit would be. Like my wife and I sit out there, we burn logs, and yeah, sometimes the smoke blows in our face the whole time, but it's soothing just to sit there, we put a little music on, there's the fire, the kids love to poke the fire and throw stuff in it. It's awesome, but it's just that time outside, under the stars or in the sun, just hanging out together. Well, now you're leading, you mentioned your kids, rebel parenting yeah. is, is a total different uh, meme or, or style of ministry. Uh, who are the rebels, your children or the parents? Uh, definitely the parents. We're really rebelling against lifeless dead marriages and checked out parents. And honestly, here's the truth. My dad for me was the original rebel. Like when I, when I formed Rebel Parenting, he was like, Ryan, really? Rebel parenting, rebelliousness? And I'm like, hey, I learned this stuff from you. <laughs> My dad's first book was released August 31st, 1970. It was Dare to Discipline. Yeah. At the same time, the leading child psychologist of the day was Dr. Spock, and not this Dr. Spock, right, right. but the Dr. Spock. And his book said, we're all born good, 
And if you just let your kids do whatever they want, eventually they'll choose the right path. If they want to go to bed, let them go to bed. If they don't, let them stay up. Who cares? Because eventually they'll choose the right time to go to bed. If they want to eat sugar all the day, if they want to eat vegetables, great. Let them do whatever they want because eventually they'll choose the right path. And my dad was like, are you kidding? We're all born rotten. No one needs to tell a kid to learn the word no or mine or to be selfish. And boundaries show your kids that you love them. Boundaries say, I care about you. When you've got a teenage daughter and she's going out at night and you don't say, where are you going? Who are you going to be with? What time are you going to stay out till? It says, I don't love you. It says, I don't care about you. But if you say, listen, I, I care about you so much. I want to know who's going to be there. Do they have older siblings? What are they like? I haven't met the parents. Well, I don't want you to go over there. I want to meet them first. I want to say hi to that boy that's going to take you out. I want to find out what his intentions are. And they'll be so embarrassed. And oh my goodness. It says, I care about you enough to know where you're going to be because you're a precious commodity that I care about. Well, I'm impressed with the concept. And, and by the way, I'm not offended and I'm a little bit impressed by the earrings, the tattoos here. Why on your. are the only one here that looks like me? I mean, come on. What is going on out here? You have your own personality. Your <laughs> wife has beautiful pink hair That's on this right. card. Laura. That's our cancer awareness picture. Well, totally. It, uh, talk about the struggle. I mean... Uh, your, your wife is a cancer survivor, and that must have really impacted your life. Here's the truth. I want to put a great spin on it. Cancer's terrible. Yeah. It really is. And that's the other part, too. We want to tell people, like, give yourself a break. And with my kids, my son would come to me and be like, Daddy, how are you feeling? And I can't tell him it's fine or I'm fine. He knows I'm not. If I tell him I'm fine when I'm not, it makes him crazy. Like, well, I must, something must be wrong with me. And I just be like, this is terrible. I wish I could take the pain away. Chemo is awful. Having your wife go through that much pain and suffering and you can't take it away, it's the worst experience I've gone through. And it made us stronger as a family because we didn't try to sugarcoat it. Yeah. My kids have seen me cry many, many times. I'll get choked up talking about it. Yeah. I hate cancer. I hate cancer. Yeah. And lots and lots of people go through it and trying to lie and you know like oh well it's all gonna work out maybe it won't wow. we can't guarantee it's gonna work out maybe it will maybe it won't but we're gonna trust the Lord that he knows what's best for us that's the hardest thing in the world right like knowing that Christ died for me like he paid that price before I could give an argument here's the truth I'm not good enough or bad enough for Christ to die for me at least that's what I say, and when I say that, his response is, how dare you? I paid the price before you could ever even make that choice, so if he paid that high of a price for me, you know what it says, I stand at the door and knock? Yeah. That's an eternal statement. That's from before you were created until the instant I come back, I am banging on that door. If that's how he feels about me, and he allows us to go through cancer, well then that's what we're supposed to go through. And so I've got to figure out what am I learning through this. Now, sometimes I try to learn and sometimes I'm just depressed and I go to therapy and I cry the whole time. But I'm growing as a parent and I'm growing as a husband to try to be there for my wife. And then, you know, like you're in the middle of chemo and I mean, gosh, the pain that my wife goes through. And then my kids start acting totally crazy. And I'm like, why are they going crazy? You know, you're supposed to be a good kid. Their mom's got in chemo. She's in so much pain. Yeah. And it affects them too. That's right. And being able to be like, you know what? I'm not going to punish you for being ugly today because I've been ugly a hundred times during this process. That's the other one too. Friends. You find out who your friends are when you go through cancer. Wow. Like there was a ton of acquaintances that loved hanging out with us and loved doing fun things. Yeah. And then we got kind of ugly. And it was like, oh, hey, you know, like we didn't think Christian leaders could be ugly. And it's like, oh, no, I'm super ugly sometimes. But that's when your real friends come out of the woodwork. And they're like, oh, we love you when you're ugliest. We love you when you're the worst. There's no better friendship than when you've been just a terrible human being around another person. And they just giggle and laugh and hug you harder. Like we have gotten the best friendships and the deeper, deeper relationship with yeah. my kids, with my wife, because of, now I wouldn't wish it on anybody. No. And I'm a better person for it. Like how terrible is that, right? Uh, like I really am, but it's awful. Very impressive. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, I'm gonna ask Ryan Dobson about his personal journey and how he found Jesus. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back.
Reading today's headlines, doesn't it seem sometimes like the world is unreal? We hear about rumors of wars and we see legislative and cultural battles here in America. But where is our hope? I think it's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're offering now a, a DVD series led by family ministry leader Vince Dacchioli, Real Christianity in an Unreal World. It behooves us to really understand what does it mean to be relevant as a Christian and to be real and to spread the gospel in a way to where more and more people will, be in, will embrace it and move yep. in the right direction. We can send you the entire DVD series, which is three-part teaching with Vince and a bonus of my personal testimony for a suggested donation of just $30 if you call now at 866-ObeyGod or write to the address on your screen or visit PrayInJesusName.org. We want to rush you this important teaching to ground your faith in real Christianity. You know, people ask me, chaps, we're watching on this network. We've already set our DVR to record your shows, but our friends don't have this network or maybe they can't watch at this time. Did you know we are on demand on 10 different platforms? You can tell your friends to find this show, PIJN News, on their Roku box or their Amazon Fire box. Just look under the religion or news categories. Or maybe you have a smartphone or your friends or grandchildren can find us on Android TV, Google TV, Smart TV, or iTunes. Of course, we're always on the internet. Look for us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, or better yet, subscribe to our daily email alerts at PrayInJesusName.org. It's important that you share all of these available platforms with your friends so we can mobilize all of the body of Christ to pray the news and change the world. Would you join us? Visit PrayInJesusName.org to learn more empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Ryan Dobson, son of the legendary Dr. James Dobson. But Ryan and his wife, Laura, have their own ministry now, Rebel Parenting. Mm -hmm. What's your website and what do people find there? Oh, rebelparenting.org. Uh, here's the truth too, we have a resource pack, we give it out. Like we have sponsors, I'm here with Pilgrim's Progress, the movie, they sponsor the podcast so that we can give our resources out for free. Parents are broke, it's diapers or you know, buying a book, well, they're probably buying diapers. Right. And so guys like Rebel, uh, guys like Pilgrim's Progress, uh, you know, The Voice of the Martyrs, My Pillow, sponsor us so that we can give our resource pack away for free. If you text the word Rebel to 444-999, you'll get a feel for what we do. We've got some of the top podcasts in there, child temperament tests, things to help your marriage grow. And we do three shows a week because we want to, not because we have to. You know, sometimes if you're doing something every single day, you get what you can take. Like, if it's not affecting our life, it's not transforming us, then we're not going to give it to the people out there. Most of our audience, they watch TV, maybe they're on the NRB network, have no idea what a podcast is or a download. What, what, what do I have to have to listen to that? Okay, seriously, you're missing out if you're not into podcasts. It's one of the greatest things in the world. You learn so much. There's so many fascinating people out there talking about their lives, talking about their situations. I mean, it is amazing. If you've got an iPhone, it's on iTunes, iTunes podcast. It's on Spotify. It's on SoundCloud. You can uh, search Rebel Parenting on iTunes. You'll see me and my wife with the pink hair come up, hit subscribe, and then just go through and check out the topics that we've talked about. It's so much fun. And then find all the other great ones out there. There are amazing podcasts out there. So it's like radio, but it's on demand. You definitely, can do it anytime. Yep, that's exactly right. Yeah, definitely on demand. It's, I mean, it's like Amazon Prime Music, right? Like I want to listen to this right now and they're going to create a play playlist for me. Podcasts, you know, I want to learn something today. Yeah, we do that on YouTube, right? I want to learn how to cook better. Well, I watch YouTube videos on how to cook better and hey, I get better at it. <laughs> and our podcast helps you be a better parent and a better spouse. We're on Facebook. We broadcast live on video on Facebook, every broadcast we do. So there's another minister who had a famous dad and I'm talking about Franklin Graham, who of course is, is, is the son of legendary evangelist Billy Graham. But Franklin says he went through a rebellious stage when he was into motorcycles and women and, and whatever. And eventually he came back and became the next generation evangelist that's changing the world. Did you go through a rebellious stage? Uh, yeah, I, t I mean, I rode a motorcycle too. That's hilarious, right? Like sure. I was just uh, three years ago, we went up to Alaska and went to Franklin's Wounded Warrior Camp. Yeah. And we were 
doing the salmon run fishing. But we were there. I tell you what, Franklin changed my son when we were there. So he was had wounded warrior couples there that were really struggling in their marriages, and they did eight wedding vow renewals on the spot. My son sat for like three of them, and then he was like, Daddy, can I go sit in the car? And I was like, totally, go play a video game. Like, it's going to be eight more of these. It's fine. But the next thing they did is they did baptisms in that glacier water, and there was a double amputee on crutches that made his way in the water. My son was riveted. He was riveted to that moment, and Franklin introduced a faith that was so much deeper than Lincoln understood at that moment. And he asked me, I mean, a hundred questions about baptism and about faith and why they were there and why were they showing that and why were all the people cheering and clapping and what did that mean? And six months later in California, my son asked me to baptize him in the ocean because of that. Wow. Like, I owe Franklin a debt of gratitude that could never be paid. Yeah, you know what? I struggled. I really did. When I went to college for the first time, it was in the Midwest, and I didn't know. Like, in California, all my friends knew me before we were famous. Like, my best friends couldn't have cared less when my parents became famous. I went to Illinois. Oh, everybody cared. And I didn't know what to do. They had, these guys traveled three days to come meet me and I was out of town so they took pictures in front of my door. Like, I can't live up to that. Yeah. I can't live up to whatever that thing is. I mean, parents were inviting me home and telling their daughters they can elope with me, like crazy stuff. And I just felt like I couldn't live up to it. And it really, I needed to get into therapy. And I gotta give it to my parents. They didn't push, they didn't prod, but they opened the door for me to talk to a counselor. And when I got to Biola, I found a little bit of that again, and they got me hooked up with, oh, I don't care who, Keith Edwards was the Dean of Rosemead School of Psychology at the time. That guy counseled me. He, and we push counseling in such a big way. When you go through trauma, when you go through hard times, when you go through situations where you don't, you know, no, you have no tools or resources on what to do. A lot of people choose numbing agents, you know, whether it's drugs or alcohol or food or sugar or Instagram or TV. And it's really natural for people to do that. I was talking to a doctor recently and he started going to AA. And I said, when do you start drinking heavily? And he goes, in residency. And I go, what was it like? And he's like, I was 31 years old and my higher ups beat you down every day and tell you what a piece of trash you are. People die in your arms, you get no sleep, and we didn't know what to do. And I go, yeah, you turned to alcohol, right? And he goes, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All of you did, right. because you weren't in therapy. You didn't know how to process those feelings. How do you process the emotions of someone dying at your hands wow. at 30? Yeah. You're a baby at 30, what were you thinking? And now, at 55, when he's had an alcohol problem and his wife says, stop drinking or I'm going to leave you, and he's like, I don't know what to do. And I go, go to AA, get into counseling, and learn how to deal with those problems you had when you were 30. Yeah. Go revisit those things. It's terrible, but their marriage is doing that because he's taking the time to learn how to process those horrible, awful emotions with a therapist. He's a great Christian therapist that's building him up and his marriage is getting better. His relationship with his kids is getting better. He's getting healthier because of going to the right process. When did Jesus come into the picture in your journey? Oh, I mean, early, early, early on. My parents were always so upfront about their faith and I watched them rely on the Lord all the time. Right, like when I was a baby, my dad was, uh, he was a professor of pediatrics at uh, USC Children's Hospital. He was at, um, oh, I'm totally going to forget the hospital he was at. Children's Hospital Los Angeles. He was a professor of child development at Point Loma and then quit to start focus on the family. Wow. I mean, that was a death sentence. Like, were you going to be on radio? And you're going to talk once a week? And it didn't go anywhere. Like, it literally didn't go anywhere until he went five days a week. And they put all their savings into it. I mean, they risked everything. Yeah. And then with focus on the family, you're running an organization of 1,500 employees and 2,500 volunteers, and you're on to 330 million people a week, and you're trying to raise $162 million a year every single year. You don't think they got stretched? And what did he do? Every time, relied on the Lord. Relied on the Lord. And then for me... One of the big turning points, my parents sent me to a camp in Colorado called Summit. Jeff Myers runs Summit Ministry. Summit.org is the camp. Yeah. It's such a fantastic place. They showed me I can make a difference. It was a Christian worldview camp. And my parents described it like summer school, but you'll like it. And I was like, what? I hate school. What do you think I'm going to like <laughs> summer school for? And 
it set me on fire. I dedicated my first book to Dr. David Noble that was the president at the time of the camp. Yeah. It turned me around and said, you've got a purpose, you've got meaning, God has a plan for your life, you can affect history, you can be a world changer. It taught me all of those things and it really set my faith on fire. It said, your faith has a meaning right now for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I gotta be honest, having kids totally changed me. Yeah. Having my wife go through cancer completely changed me again. You know, going through that process, that deepens your faith in a real way. And you become so much closer to Jesus through all that. You do. Yeah, and I, here's what I figured out. There's nothing I can do that's going to make the Lord love me more or less. Yeah. And it's only me that doesn't feel him from time to time. But what I've realized is every second, every millisecond of the day, the Lord is there, arms around me, cheering me on, caring about me. It's just that when I go through hard times, I don't feel it. And I've got to have my head tell my heart that the Lord is there, surrounding me, caring about me, cheering me on. All of heaven is there. It's only me that doesn't feel it. And if I can convince my heart that it's still there, then I'm going to keep pushing forward regardless of if I feel it or not. Amen to that. We're out of time, but this is, this guy's like, the next generation. He's he's taking over the podcast world with his wife, Laura. This is Ryan Dobson. How can people find your website again? Uh, rebelparenting.org and on iTunes, search Rebel Parenting and we're right there. Rebelparenting.org. He's, he's changing the world just like Jesus called him to do. I'm Dr. Chaps. We'll be right back. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. We're here in Israel, in literally the scene of all of the holy sites, like the Via Dolorosa, where Jesus carried his cross, the garden tomb where he was raised from the dead, the Sea of Galilee, where he taught the disciples. And I prayed, Lord, how can I bring this inspiring environment into your living room? And what we've produced is a four DVD disc set with the entire Gospel of Matthew. I teach every verse in all 28 chapters of Matthew in short 12 minute segments so you can understand the exact words that Jesus taught from the exact location where Jesus lived. Pick up the phone right now and call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. For a suggested donation of just $50, we'll give you all four discs, the entire Gospel of Matthew, or you can write to us at the address on your screen or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You're gonna love this Bible teaching. Pick up the phone and call us today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Our thanks to Ryan Dobson for that interview. Please donate to us when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. Help us bring you these great interviews. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 16, every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God which he has given to you. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.